Events of the last few years have clearly demonstrated the need for Britain to build and sustain a skilled, proficient shearing force. The opportunities for learning to shear and for improving and maintaining skills, which can lead to savings on the farm or gaining a vocational qualification, which could open up employment opportunities, are better than they've ever been and standards of training are excellent. This video has been produced to provide an introductory guide to shearing and also as a training resource to complement the beginners courses. Preparation before shearing is just as important as learning the technique. The first step involves choosing the best spot to set up portable pens or a trailer to establish your shearing area. In doing this remember that sheep prefer to move uphill or towards daylight. You'll find that moving the sheep from the back of the shed or trailer towards daylight will be much easier and less stressful for you and the sheep. Be sure the sheep are empty and their wool is thoroughly dry before bringing them into the pen. Don't overcrowd the pen, give every animal room to stand. It's also important that you have a clear space available as a run for the shorn animals. This needs to be well away from the shearing area where they may cause danger to both you and to themselves. Next you should check the machinery and the equipment you'll need. Start with the shearing machine which should be securely fixed at the top with a bracket and it's worthwhile checking every day that the bolts are tight. The bracket should be fixed securely to a stand raised to the appropriate height to allow the dropper to hang down just free of the board on which you should work. To reduce your workload, the equipment should be set up with easy access of the catching gate and with a minimum of distance to drag out the sheep. Well, let's now look at the electrics. Check all the cables and sockets are clean and free of breakages and you do need to be sure you have a circuit breaker fitted. Insert the circuit breaker at the source plug, then run the extension cable to the machine, taking care that it's secured away from both the livestock and the workforce. Now to setting up the handpiece, and it's advisable to keep combs in a pouch like this one. You can't work with a comb which isn't sharp, and grinding is a topic in itself. Short courses designed to cover gear and its maintenance are available, particularly in the winter months, and these will cover grinding in some detail. It's important to know which comb you should use and why. Make sure when you buy combs that you acquire one which is most suitable for your needs. Combs range from those with a 7mm bevel down to a 3.5mm and each has a particular use and it's critical for shearers to understand this. This is the bevel. The longest shown here is 7 millimetres with a more slender pointed tooth. At the other end of the scale is the 3.5 millimetre. It has a much shorter curve and is more bulbous at the tip. The finer and more dense the wool is, the longer and finer is the required bevel. The 3.5mm is used for open wool sheep and therefore is the most commonly used in Britain. And the 7mm one is used for the fine dense wool of the merinos in Australia. There's two things to remember when we're setting up our handpiece. First of all we'll put our comb on and tighten the comb screws, keeping the back of the comb parallel to the back of the comb bed. Our cutter just sits on the top. The chicken feet go into the holes of the cutter. Now I have to remember my two things that I'm trying to achieve here. One is the throw, the distance the cutter goes across the comb. And the second is the lead, which is the distance from the point of the cutter to the scallop, the end of the scallop. Now I'll set it up and show you the throw has to go from covering the bottom tooth, just touching on the bottom tooth, to just touching on the top tooth. So after I set my bottom tooth, I turn it round and tighten the screws slightly, 
just to hold it there. Turn it back and check that it's coming up onto the top tooth here, which it is there. And it's going down onto the bottom tooth here. And my lead, which varies depending on the sheep, is probably about right there. That's where I'd start. Anywhere between there down to about five mil for a start. So that's roughly where I want my comb and cutter to be sitting. Turn it round in my hand and check the comb screws are tight. Some tension on just to hold the cutter there and then just check that the throw is going from one end to the other and touching both the top and the bottom teeth with my lead anywhere between five and seven mils for a rough guide. Once set, you'll need to be sure that the handpiece is also well lubricated before starting to shear. To do this, place a spot of oil down the viral to lubricate the spindle, then a spot in the oil hole at the top. Put two or three spots on the comb and cutter, and lastly a couple of spots on the cogs at the back. Shearing is hard physical work and it's important that you don't start shearing from cold without warming up. A few short simple exercises first will help to eliminate injury through strain on the muscles in the back or in the legs and shoulders. You'll see that Alan is wearing a shearing vest and that it's long enough to be well tucked into the trousers so that even when he's bending the back is always covered to prevent chills in the back muscles. He's also wearing proper shearing trousers which have two layers of denim down the front half of the legs and this protects them from the grease in the wool. If you wear normal trousers you'd find that the grease penetrates through to the skin. The material will rub on the skin constantly and the grease will cause infections and sores. Moccasins are worn partly for comfort but also as they have no sole the shearer can roll around on the ball of his foot with ease. He can feel the sheet properly and have better control of it and moccasins won't slip on the greasy boards. It is of course crucial to comply with all the biosecurity protocol that both moccasins and shearing clothes are clean at the start of each flock. You'll notice that the board on which Alan is going to work is marked with a diagram drawn from a stencil specially designed to assist in keeping the sheep in the correct position during shearing. The template is available as a training resource and on a beginner's course you'll be shown exactly how to work within this area. We've highlighted the inner circle and the starting line. While you're shearing you shouldn't enter the circle and when first starting the sheep's flank should be sitting in line with the straight line drawn below the handpiece. Aim to shear the sheep within the outer circle guideline and don't let your feet or the animal stray over it. The long straight line is there to guide you when you step up the neck of the sheep. Aim to keep your toes parallel with this line. The two short lines running parallel with the shearing pen indicate the position of the sheep whilst on the long blow. The portion of the straight line highlighted at the back marks the point at which you should aim to finish the sheep. The next important thing is to make sure that we control the sheep and tip it over and have it under control before we get to where we want to shear it. Um, we drag a sheep back with a left hand on the brisket and your right hand on the right foot. The other thing is with our left hand we can be breaking this wool here so that when we come to start to shear we've got a natural place to, for the handpiece to enter. Now we drag the sheep back to where this handpiece is which is in a straight line down and that line then follows on through the flank and you're about three to four inches away from the heel of the handpiece. Now to sit the sheep in we need to put the foot between the eye and the ear, just drop her knees, 
push the sheep in, close her legs, and we should have the sheep held comfortably. This knuckle in here is either just behind your knee or beside of it. Now the next thing we're going to do is we want to get all the wool off this belly and it should take four to five blows depending on how big the sheep is. I'll shear the belly off and then I'll go back through and talk you through it. Now you can see I've taken all the belly off. The first blow starts on the left hand side of the brisket, middle of the comb, and you're down aiming for the flank and when you get to the, the flank, turn back towards the teats on the sheep so that we finish that blow. Also, her left hand is coming in behind and we're pulling the last bit of wool into the handpiece rather than pushing the handpiece all the way where we get a wrinkle in the skin and we don't finish her blow. By using your left hand, you can just go in and back. The other thing to remember here is when on ewe lambs or lambs or hoggets, you've got small teats, always keep the handpiece on the skin and come back on the skin, not going down and out there. That's when you cut teats and cause problems. To get these, the third blow in, we need to stretch the sheep out by coming back on my left heel, up on my toe, your hand on the top of the brisket. When you get to there, you can come back down. So we've got this rocking movement as we're doing the belly. Okay. Now it's important we get down this right side of the brisket because if we don't get it there, we'll have to get it later on. So that causes problems when you get to your last side. And the next thing is to run out the top of the leg. As you're doing that, the weight comes onto your right foot, so you just ease forward on your left foot. It's one blow around the crack. And as we're doing that, the weight comes up onto her left foot, so we can just ease forward on this right foot, keeping this brisket in front of the right knee. Now we need to clean the top of this leg. And first blow into this flank. Start at the hock. As we get there, we drop the heel of the handpiece, and her hand, left hand, is pulling. It's on top of the wool, keeping the skin tight underneath. Now I've done the rest of the leg. We've done that first blow. Second one goes in. Starting at the hock again. And as, the, as you finish that blow, the heel of the handpiece comes up so that we're keeping the comb on the skin. If we go in like that, we'll have second cuts in here. So it's in, up. As that second blow goes in, you can let this brisket go through so that the sheep is rolling towards the handpiece, finishing the same with the heel coming up. While I'm doing this, I'm going back on my right foot and forward on my left so that we're working the sheep so the back end of the sheep is pointing towards the catching pen door.
These two blows we call the undermine. One is on the top side of the backbone, one is on the bottom side of the backbone. Start the blows with the heel of the handpiece down and finish with it up. And a good thing to remember here is the backbone is going to be more or less parallel to the floor. So it's one there. To get the second blow in, just go back on my right foot and it rolls the sheep over. So I can put that second blow in and I've got two big blows, one either side of the backbone. Now we've got to step forward to come up the neck. The left hand goes back through and grab the wool at the top of the brisket. As we do that we rock forward, step right through with the left foot, pass the back end of the sheep and the right foot follows through and is in between the back legs of the sheep. The point of the shoulder is behind my left knee. My right knee is in between the brisket and the right leg of the sheep. And I've got full control of the sheep with my legs. I can drop it out, bring it back. I'm not using my upper body to hold it. Start on the top side of the brisket. Just aim up and turn, come out underneath the jaw and break the wool out. Right. One, turn the head back, keep it down, back at the base of the ear. Second blow up to the ear. So we've got two full blows in here. It's important to keep the head down level with our knee. As this third blow goes in, just move our left right foot back a little bit and turn that left heel out so we can pop the shoulder past so the sheep is falling away from us slightly. You can try and keep your left leg straight here and your right knee is pushing the sheep into your left leg and controlling it. I'll just go back and go through that. This next blow comes off the top of the leg and as it goes in your left hand comes onto that leg and pulls the leg in towards your right leg. All the time we're just moving the right foot around into there. Drop one blow in below that leg so that when we finish we've moved our left foot the toe is just turned in, but the right foot has moved the sheep around so we're parallel to our shearing stand or trailer. Now we're going to start the long blows. It's important to drop the heel of your handpiece so you just start with a full comb. Our left leg is keeping the sheep on its back at the moment. As we do one, two, just straighten that leg and the sheep will roll back towards you so you can see where your third blow is going to start. Depending on the size of the sheep will you do two or three short long blows but whenever you do your first long one as soon as you get to the shoulder your weight will come onto your left foot so you can take that right foot over to there. Hand is on the head. Try and keep your arms straight here. We don't want the head up here. Keep the head down there. Every time we put a blow in 
as we come back the weight comes onto our right foot just move the left foot back a little bit so we can roll the sheep so we actually present our next blow On, a, on this sheep is fairly round, so there's no predominant backbone. But on thinner sheep, you will need to shear to the backbone and then get at least one full blow over the backbone. Okay. Now, as this last blow, last long blow comes in, as you get to there, bring your right foot around, bring it into about an inch away from this shoulder, and then just drag your left heel back. so that we bring these feet back off the ground. Clear the side of the face. Now we're pushing down on that head, not hanging onto the ear or doing this. Hand on the top of the head, push down, keep that nice and flat. Next blow, drop the heel of your handpiece. As we're doing that, our left leg starts in there. We are either going to let at least one leg out. I prefer to let two out. And into there, and we're turning, hands under the jaw, thumb between the eye and the ear. Bring the head up and twist and hold it between your legs. So the weight, again, is all on your legs and not your upper body. Just go back through this shoulder. We're there after the first blow. Second blow into there, back on your right foot. Go through with your left. Push down on with your left hand. Fingers pulling up. Clear that piece underneath of there. You need to be able to see your left toe here and your right foot is tucked well underneath on the other side. One straight down. Just go back on your left foot slightly, then straighten your right leg. And the third one can go straight out. Come back and clear any freakies. So we're starting there, it's one, back on your left, straighten your right, two, and we're just gradually creeping back at an inch at a time until we've finished. All right, remembering, drop your heel of your handpiece so you're starting those blows free. Let's just have a careful look now from another angle to see how Alan has drawn his sheep back to the starting position to start on the belly. Note his left foot is on the outer circle line. Watch his foot movements as he goes round the crutch, moving forward, raising the sheep into a more upright position to prepare it for the first hind leg. Stepping up the neck, Alan's feet are parallel to the front line on the board diagram. Then notice how he turns the sheet round for the long blow, in line with the two short lines on the board.
coming down the last side, he starts to turn the opposite way, looking to release the sheep across the back line between the inner and outer circles. Once the fleece is shorn, don't spoil your careful work by careless presentation. Remember to roll the fleece carefully and tightly on a clean board before packing evenly in the wool sheets. Try and make sure that you make full use of each sheet by packing tightly and evenly and a packing frame will help you do this. Store the pack sheets in a dry place off the floor to prevent the wool becoming damp. Wool handling and presentation is also an important feature of training. Courses are available throughout Britain, so if you would like to learn to shear, or think you could do the refresher course before the start of the new season. If you think it'd be useful to know more about gear maintenance or wool handling, contact the wool board today. It's bound to be a step in the right direction.